Oh hi, I cut cable a long time ago, and to this day, I have no idea what an NCIS is. Anyway, that means that I'm relying on Netflix and whatever show the kids in the van in front of me are watching on their iPads. Season 2 of NBC's The Good Place aired a while ago, in fact, Season 3 is premiering today. However, I'm relying on whenever it shows up on Netflix, and Season 2 was released last week, so I binged it in two days. But in this video, I want to make the argument that The Good Place is the best comedy on television today, and possibly... I go so far as saying it's the best comedy since The Office. That comparison is necessary, as this series was created by Michael Schur, who wrote for The Office, and then went on to create Parks and Rec and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, so he's got a pretty good pedigree so far. Before we get into why I think it's the best comedy, and also a necessary comedy, I want to discuss the roller coaster of emotions that I went on when first watching. So season one was released onto Netflix about a year ago, and at that time I had heard some rumblings about it being decent. I'm a huge Veronica Mars fan, donated to the Kickstarter to get the movie made, also really excited it's coming back even if it's on Hulu, so I wanted to check out and see what Kristen Bell was doing. Also, because I should have been born in the 1960s, I'm a fan of Cheers, and Ted Danson. Not only the Ted Danson of Cheers, but also the Ted Danson on Curb Your Enthusiasm. So the talent was there, and I began to watch. And... I was less than impressed. The first few episodes, to me, were as if this were a generic sitcom. Some decent jokes, but nothing plot-wise that really grabbed me. All I could say was that the premise was out there. This is not your normal sitcom material, at least not something from the modern day. It seemed more akin to late 70s or early 80s sitcoms, high concepts, Mork and Mindy type stuff. If you are somehow watching and are uninitiated, Kristen Bell plays Eleanor Shellstrop and awakens in episode one, realizing she has died. Ten Danson plays Michael and welcomes her to the good place, or heaven. However, again, in episode one this is revealed, Eleanor knows that she doesn't belong here. She was a horrible person on Earth and makes it her mission to not be found out. So she enlists the help of Chidi, who taught ethics and philosophy on Earth to become a better person. She also relies on characters Tahani and Jason in her quest to improve herself. For the people who are still watching, I'm assuming you've probably watched the show, but in case you haven't, I'm about to reveal a really big spoiler, so just go watch the show, at least the first season, and come back. Matt, cover your ears, Matt. Yeah, one sec. You're good! Okay, I'm good. At the end of the first season, it is revealed that Eleanor isn't in the good place after all, but is really being tortured in a new scheme cooked up by Michael, who is really a demon, trying to impress his boss. We're good. We're okay. It's a pretty big shock, but also pushes the show from being pretty good to pretty amazing. I mean, the ensemble is excellent, the jokes get better every episode, and the lore that each episode reveals deepens the emotional resonance of the show. But that reveal is so good. And here's why I want to make the case that this show is not only the best comedy currently on TV, but also the most essential. First, exactly like The Office or Parks and Rec, the casting is spot on. I can't imagine anyone else inhabiting these characters. Second, even though this is a comedy, with the exception of Jason, nobody is portrayed as stupid. In fact, Kristen Bell's Eleanor is exceedingly smart. She's always just a few steps ahead of Michael's plan. What it leans in on is that these four characters, five if we want to include Michael, are flawed human beings, real human beings and a real hero. Yes, they weren't the best of humanity. They were selfish or indecisive or prideful or willfully ignorant. However, and maybe this is just because it fits with my worldview, they do show empathy. They show that they care for their fellow humans, maybe not at first, but eventually they want to do the right thing. They sacrifice to make another person's life better. They recognize their faults. And while they still often succumb to those faults, they make strides to become an improved version of themselves. So that leads directly into the third thing. And yes, I'm about to get a tiny bit political. Thirdly, this is a direct response to the Trumpian view of life. Go with me here. I'm not one of those people who believe that Donald Trump was the cause of the political mess that is the United States. He is very much a symptom of problems that have existed for decades. However, what he represents is a boorish, hateful, and pridefully stupid segment of the population. He believes that he is great and has no need to ever better himself. If anyone shows vulnerability, that is something to be mocked. And what The Good Place strives to show is that even the most assholish of people can change. And they can change not just because they want to get to that good place, but because it makes the world they currently live in better. While Michael Schur was quoted, spiritual and ethical is how I thought of it in regards to the show, I do think that the religion aspect of the show is fascinating. It doesn't prescribe a strict Christian or Jewish or any other religion view of the world. Basically, all of the religions exist together. But what it does borrow from Christianity and many other religions is that the purpose of humanity is to be kind to your neighbor, to help those less fortunate, to be good 
and truthful people. Not so much the belief in a spiritual higher power, but all the other stuff is there. This is something that is greatly lacking in our society. We now need to make everything an argument. Nobody really wants to listen to others, and to concede any point means that you agree with everything the other person is saying. I've never prescribed to this idea that the world is black and white, that all things are good or bad. And what The Good Place so brilliantly does is to take people who aren't the best representation of humanity, makes us, the audience, sympathize with them, and then goes further and shows that they can choose to become better. They aren't digging their heels in or blaming everyone else for their position in life. They take ownership and set their sights on improving themselves. And that's why I think that The Good Place is essential for the time we live in. Also, the combination of Kristen Bell and Ted Danson is a national treasure. But what do you think? Have you seen the show? Do you agree? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We'll see each other soon, whether it's in a good or bad place, next Thursday. This was a Media Lab production brought to you by Media Lab, YYC. Get yours today. Gucci.